Ah, Kamala Harris is finally unveiling her grand plans, and as expected, it's a hot mess. After months of keeping her cards close to the chest, she's finally showing us her hand. But don't be fooled, this is just more of the same from the Biden-Harris administration. Harris kicked off her big reveal with a so-called populist economic plan that's sure to turn heads and not in a good way. The highlight? A federal price gouging ban aimed at companies who dare to raise prices. Sound familiar? Yep, it's a blast from the past, recalling failed price control schemes like the ones under President Nixon. Harris wants to empower the Federal Trade Commission and state attorneys general to punish companies for breaking these new rules. At a rally in North Carolina, she said, as president, I will go after the bad actors and I will work to pass the first ever federal ban on price gouging on food. Bold words. But let's not forget that her policies are part of the reason we're dealing with sky high prices in the first place. Critics aren't holding back. They see this for the desperate attempt to shift blame for the inflation crisis her administration has fueled. Even Senator J.D. Vance, OH, isn't buying it, calling it out for what it is. Meanwhile, former President Trump didn't waste any time, pointing out the obvious in front of a display of skyrocketing grocery prices. Remember, inflation under Trump's presidency averaged just 1.9%, compared to the staggering 6.5% we're seeing now under Biden-Harris. The numbers speak for themselves. But Harris wasn't done. She rolled out more ideas, each more questionable than the last. She's talking about building 3 million new homes, handing out tax incentives to developers, and throwing $40 billion at local governments to fix housing shortages. And let's not forget the $25,000 down payment assistance for first-time homebuyers. A handout, plain and simple. Then there's her plan to bring back the pandemic-era $3,600 child tax credit, along with a $6,000 credit for newborns. It sounds great, sure, but where's all this money coming from? Harris hasn't released a price tag for these ambitious policies, but budget experts estimate they could add a whopping $2 trillion to the national debt over the next decade. That's on top of her previously announced plans to eliminate taxes on tips and raise the minimum wage, which would cost another $200 billion. But Harris insists she can pay for all this by raising taxes on corporations and high earners. How exactly? She's not saying either. Big surprise. Meanwhile, the media is cheering her on, with progressive economists like David Madlin from the Center for American Progress giving her a thumbs up. He's particularly excited about the idea of capping grocery prices, despite the obvious red flags. And then there's Democratic strategist Brad Bannon, who's practically giddy that Harris is finally embracing her inner populist. If only President Biden had done the same, right? Not everyone's on board. Budget hawks are sounding the alarm, warning that these spending schemes are a fast track to economic disaster. David McIntosh, president of the Club for Growth, nailed it when he said, there is no daylight between Kamala's plan and the four years of economic failures our country has endured under Joe Biden. He's not wrong. Harris's plans are more of the same kind of reckless spending that's been driving inflation through the roof. And let's not forget Trump's reminder to voters. Harris has been right there in the West Wing, helping steer this ship straight into the iceberg. His message is clear. More Kamala means more economic pain. And honestly, who can argue with that? As the media tries to paint Harris as some sort of economic savior, voters shouldn't forget the reality. These proposals are nothing more than a distraction from the economic failures of the past four years. Come election day, voters will remember who's been in charge during this economic mess.